Hey everybody, this is the Sliders Review, and I'm here today to talk to you about Moon Knight Season 1, Episode 2, Summon the Suit. This show is boring. <laughs> Let's just be real for a second, you know what I'm saying? I mean, I know it, you know it. Don't kid yourself. It's interesting, but the intrigue is slightly starting to wear off because it's kind of like, what are you doing, Marvel? What direction are you going in? Why are you chopping up the comic and just like placing things in like weird positions and stuff like that? You know, I have to say, Moon Knight is probably the worst Sailor Moon adaption I have ever seen. I know what you're saying, huh? Don't worry, I'll get into that a little bit later and towards the end of this video. I'm explaining why Moon Knight is basically just Sailor Moon and stuff just like reworked and different. Ah, uh, but let's get into this actual episode. First, let me start off by saying they did something in this episode you should never ever do. And they did not decide to correct people. In this episode, we are introduced to Layla, and what does she do? She taps on the side of the fish tank. That is a big no no. No, 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 no. You never do that. Like, never. Why? Because you can seriously screw up your fish. You gotta stop and think about it. It's a giant glass bowl or a tank or whatever, filled with water. That's enough to cause some type of sonic, like, vibrational, like, distortion, um, like, in, like, the ears, the body, the organ, stuff like that, all right? It's basically like a giant tuning fork <laughs> and everything. So when you tap on the side of a fish tank or aquarium or bowl or whatever, one, it scares the bejesus out of a fish. Two... You can seriously, like, mess up, like, um, their weird little sonar type stuff. Three, you can damage the organs in their body. And four, you can kill it. Basically, your, your fish is either going to be terrified, mentally inept, <laughs> or dead. <laughs> you never do that. So why did they do that for this show? Who knows? Because you got to stop and think about it. Fishes are stupid. Little teeny tiny goldfish are stupid. Why? When you overfeed a fish, it's stupid little brain doesn't tell it, hey, I'm full. Let me stop eating. Nope. It's going to keep on eating until it's going to be hanging upside down. Stupid. <laughs> now let's get into this show. Seriously, wake me up when there's some actual action in this show. I am just starting to get bored. And see... <sighs> I was hoping that it would start off with him beating up on the jackal and everything. To be quite honest with you, I forgot how this even like began, like the, the beginning of the episode. Because um, I watched it at, um, I, let's say I watched it at around 2 or 3 in the morning. No, about 2, I think it was about 2. I stopped around 2.15 and I went to sleep. And then I didn't watch the rest until late the next night. And so I completely forgot how this episode even starts. But the part I um, started up on was he was hugging the gold looking statue man. And so then somehow he decided he's going to track down who this Mark Spector dude is, right? And he goes to like this storage unit. And when he goes in there, there's like a little cot. There's like a bag and there's some other like, stuff in there. Because apparently Mark has been sleeping there. And so... When he's like, you know, ruffling through like the stuff, he sees like a gun, a passport, and lots of money. And then, of course, Mark talks to him. Now, I gotta say, the cheapest and easiest way to have Mark talk to him is through like reflection. But I'm kind of getting tired of it always being like a shiny metal reflection or a mirror. Change it up, do like a water puddle. That would be pretty neat. Like, it's a nice stormy night. Um,. Steve is kind of like, you know, out of it and he's like upset and then he looks down and it's like a giant water puddle and he's talking to what's his face or he just sees like a, a little drip and you know, like we see little slow motion drips come down. We see like Mark's face. That would be interesting. That'd be a nice visual. But anyways, he's talking to Mark and you know, all this other stuff and 
you know, Mark's always like, you know, let me have full control, blah, 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 you know, do this one last thing, you'll never hear from me again, blah, 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 and then we hear Conchu talking and stuff like that, and it's just starting to be, and it started to feel more the same of last week's episode, except for it was reworked slightly different and stuff, and I started getting kind of bored and all this other stuff, like, I don't know why they're making us believe that Steven is the primary, like, host body person. Because in the comics, he's not. It's actually Mark. And so, with this, um, what is it? So, it's kind of like, um, they set up a scene where Kanchu, like, shows up, right? And this is self-evident that Marvel doesn't know how to do horror at all. They don't know how to do scary moments. Um, well, Marvel, Disney, I should say Disney, because Marvel has done like some creepy stuff in the past, but not much. But it, it's self-evident now that they don't know how to do like suspense horror type stuff. So when he does eventually leave, like you know, the um, storage unit. We see some like rattling of the walls. We see like some eerie music and stuff. We see like the flashes of Conchu. And then we see like the flashes of light as they're like, you know, going from one side of the wall to like another. So it's like, oh, corridor and like coming towards Mark. Oh, I should say going towards Steven. And so like, then it just rushes with Conchu just rushing towards him. And I'm just like, that's not how you build up suspense or horror. And not only that, but Conchu looks kind of ridiculous. He is comic book accurate, but the CGI looks terrible on him. And when he moves, it looks terrible on him. And he has a unique design, because like I said, comic book accurate, but he just has a weird CGI look and feel to him and stuff. And not to mention his voice. I'm so tired of him acting, sounding like Venom. Why they decided to go that route? Like, hey, who knows? You know what I'm saying? Um, but there is a good possibility that they are trying to tie this to like the Sony Spider-Verse in some kind of way. Because you got to stop and think about it. How exactly is Moon Knight connected to the MCU? I still believe that Moon Knight operates on a parallel Earth. And then when Wanda breaks open the multiverse, then that's how he's gonna slip on through the MCU. Because so far this doesn't connect in any kind of way. And everything MCU related connects. Everything, especially the Disney Plus shows. Their Disney Plus shows are supposed to get you ready for the next phases. So far this is not doing that. And so, I truly believe this is on like a parallel earth. It has to be someone some kind of ways. I mean, they 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 shoehorn the whole venom thing in the um no way home. And so like that was kind of like a last minute decision, I believe. And I'm starting to believe that they kind of like, hey, you know, Venom, um, he does this thing. He's goofy. He's silly. He talks in his head. He sounds with a ridiculous voice. Let's do the same thing for this show. So it kind of people get that kind of vibe thinking, hey, is it like connected in some way? And so then when he finally makes his way out, it's kind of weird the way they set it up because they have Contra coming towards him. It freaks him out. And then the screen pauses. And I'm thinking to myself, Wait, did my internet go out or something like that? No, then it goes to like the next scene when he's running outside. How did he escape that? They didn't even show it. So they're doing that same crap of like the last episode where they start something and then it, and then it goes to like a completely different scene. So the whole pause thing, I'm like, okay, it's pausing, but then what? But then we see him just run out. And then out of nowhere, a woman finds him. And this woman just happens to be very important to both the show and Mark. Um, it's Mark's wife, Layla. <laughs> and I'm just like, oh, that's a coincidence. I don't know, like, like, <laughs> she just shows up and that's, that happens to be the first person he meets. I mean, come on now. Now, here's the interesting thing about her. They, when they um, had her, they acted all mysterious with her they didn't show her face she's wearing a helmet he, um she's on he's on the back of like her a motor vehicle and you don't see her face and she just keeps talking and talking and then you see her face in the reflection of a mirror 
and then she just keeps talking and talking some more and then like they'll like go towards her face but then they'll move away real fast i'm just like what's so mysterious about this woman nothing she's just an average woman <laughs> who happens to be mark's wife <laughs> and everything and so then they finally show her face and i'm just like well what was the whole mystery of that like the way they set it up was supposed to be mysterious but it wasn't mysterious um, I mean, the, the reveal of who she is was mysterious, but you know, we living in the, the, the age of spoilers and stuff. So before this show even came out, people went to Wikipedia and stuff. So they already knew who she was. <laughs> now here's the odd thing about her. Um, she is indeed from the comics. Layla is. However, her name is changed. Her name in the comic is Marlene. She's a white lady with red hair. They race bent her because the creator of the show wanted her to be Egyptian. Okay, cool. But why change her name? I mean, she serves the exact same purpose as she does in the comic. Why change her name? And so, like... Marlene, that could sound kind of Egyptian, I guess. I mean, Layla kind of doesn't. <laughs> so, you know, um, so why change her name and stuff? Like, that's what I don't get. So, yeah, she is Mark's wife and they go on like adventures and stuff. And, and so I'm like, okay, cool and everything. But why change her name? <laughs> that don't make no sense. And they wanted to make her Egyptian because... See, in the comics, Mark is Jewish. Oscar Isaac is not. Let that sink in for a second. So, there's no real Jewish, Jewish reference in this show, but there is Egyptian. Why? Because Moon Knight operates under the guidance of a Egyptian moon god. And he operates sometimes out of Egypt itself. So they're like, all right, fine, let's have a lot of Egyptian influence. There's a museum, they about to travel to Egypt and all this other stuff, and they got an Egyptian woman. So that is good for representation on that part, but why change her name? <laughs> so anyways, she's talking and she knows what's his name is Moon Knight. But I don't think she knows necessarily about the different personalities because she seems oblivious to it. And so the scarab beetles in the bag full of money, his passport and guns, and she's rallying to the stuff. And we have Steven. He's just arguing back and forth with Mark until Mark tells him, do not let her go in the bag. It will get her killed. Well, of course, she doesn't in a way because she's impulsive. And what happened? He gets a knock at the door. It's these two. It's a woman. He thinks it's because he wrecked the bathroom in the last episode. And so it's these two people, they seem like the FBI type agents for, for Britain type stuff, you know what I'm saying? Um, whatever they're called over there. And so they like these detective cops and she scurried on out of there. And you get the sense that there's something wrong with these two people, especially when they barge into like the room. And so they just act kind of weird and creepy, the detective people are. So they take him and all of a sudden, um, as they're driving, we see on their wrist, oh, they got that little... Um, tattoo thing that lets them know that they're part of that evil cult thing and so they take him to like Ethan Hawke's character and they have completely redone that character he's nothing like he is in the comic why change that and so anyway we know he's evil but he's talking like oh you know you can't believe can't you and everything like you know he lies and all the other Egyptian gods hate him and everything and Kanchu, Kanchu is one of the worst characters on this show. He is so annoying. Why make him annoying? And so, basically, um, she shows up with the scarab because they want to um, kill Mark because he doesn't have it. And then so she shows up with it. And then so they're like, okay, go get it. So he tries to rescue her. But then she's all like, summon the suit, summon the suit. And he doesn't know how to do that. And so, you know, him and Mark are t constantly arguing about, you know, let him take control, this and that. And then all of a sudden he's thrown through like a window and when he's falling, he's like, give me control, give me control, blah, 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 put on the suit. So then when he lands, boom, he's in the suit, but it's not the suit we think it is. It's Mr. Knight and it's Steven's personality in Mr. Knight. And now I don't know much about Mr. Knight. I don't know if he's a separate personality or what. All I know is that he's a consultant. He does lawyer, lawyer type stuff, uh, a lawyer type stuff. Um, he goes to the police station. He goes there. He's dressed in a suit. Um, 
he's just like a consultant type person and an investigator type person and i guess like moon knight is too recognizable and too violent so he just goes under the, the disguise of like mr knight um but i believe it's just mark being mr knight uh, i don't think it's like really nobody else they haven't introduced the taxi cab driver yet um but so far it's just steven in the personality of mr knight and i have to say I was very shocked when Steven took over because all of a sudden it went from this intense moment of, okay, there's a jackal after you trying to kill you and your wife. And now all of a sudden, the moment you're in this suit, you're just like, oh, hey, look at me. I'm pretty snazzy in everything. This is a nice suit. And he just starts checking himself out in the mirror and the reflection. Oh, look, I have sticks. Look at these little poles in my hand. What? No! Like, no! It's like, dude, this is an intense moment, but Disney gotta be Disney. They have to throw in wacky humor and stuff. And it's just kind of like, look, they're writing for babies. They're not writing for adults no more. This has been self-evident for a good while. And especially in that of the Disney Plus TV shows. Because they know who is Disney Plus mostly targeted to. Is targeted to little kids and older people who used to watch a lot of these older shows back in the day. And but of course, there's mostly kids on there. And of course, a lot of parents aren't gonna do the whole parental like block type thing with the code. So what they're gonna do? Kids are gonna find things like Moonlight. Oh, he's a superhero. Oh, hey, look, he's not scary. He's written for us. And I, no, he's supposed to be a violent person who makes the streets turn red that's just who he is and so it was just kind of weird they went from this intense serious moment to something wacky that's josh whedon type of humor and the mcu is still stuck on that and they need to get away from that and so then he is still cowering and everything like that and he's getting beat up by the jackal now she can't see the jackal only he can see it and I do like the interaction of him and her trying to attack this invisible invisible thing and we can't see it either so that's kind of cool but it is okay i'll get into the whole suit thing and the cgi later so anyway so she's trying to help which is fine because she was smart enough to see that okay he's being held up in the air so the thing must be like positioned here so she wants to see it so she throws like a, a alcohol bottle at it and the the, um, the liquid makes um, the thing partly visible. But then she starts trying to fight the jackal. She stabs it and everything. And it's kind of like, okay, first of all, how she knew it was right there. And two, why is she trying to fight? Like, just be his wife, the, um, the person who does like the relic hunting type stuff. You don't need to have action. You don't need to make her a superhero too. Like, you know what I'm saying? And then when he threw her up against the wall, that should have been it for her. Either she should have died or broke her back or hit the back of her head. But somehow she survived it because, of course, this is Marvel Disney. And so when Steven can see this, so then Steven starts to man up a little bit. He sees that he's super strong. So then he tries to fight the jackal, but in a very goofy, silly kind of way, because that's who Steven is. And I'll get into that a little bit later, too. So then Mark finally convinces him, let him take over. And he does. And we finally get to see him suit up. And it's a nice transformation. It just went too fast. I want to see it a little bit slow down. Kind of like how Iron Man transformation was in the beginning of the MCU. I want to see like a long extended transformation that's like really cool and stuff, right? So in a way, Mark tells Steve that we need to take... Well, okay, before uh, Mark took over, he tells Steve like, look, man, look around you. All these people are going to get hurt that's watching us you need to take this fight elsewhere so then that's when mark takes over and then the thing that pissed me off the most is that then his wife's all like you need to get away from here and take this fight someplace else and so he takes off and he running doing what she tells him to do okay first of all he's the one who told steven that so if he told steven look these people are gonna get hurt we need to get away from here why does she need to be the one to tell him for him to actually do it and that just bugged me. It just made him just seem like ignorant and stupid. And so it's just a chase sequence. The jackal is chasing him. And 
basically what you saw in the trailer is what you see here as far as action and everything. He uses his little moon throwing things and that's kind of cool, but you know, and stuff like that. But anyway, he eventually defeats the Jackal because he pierces it on like a very sharp building and kills it. And then it turns to ash. Now let me get into the suit real fast. I've complained about this in the last episode. The CGI looks terrible on it. Period. Like... I don't understand. Okay, first thing I don't understand is Mark is supposed to be the violent one who beat the snot out of people in the last episode and killing stuff left and right. Why did he just let this thing chase him? When he took it far away from the people, why didn't he beat the snot out of it like he did in the last episode? Where's that violent streak at? It apparently has went away because Disney didn't want to show violence. No, they wanted to make this kid friendly because they're writing for babies and everything. And so I would have loved to see an actual real action sequence. All I saw was a chase sequence and him just impaling something on something spiky and sharp. And that's just not good enough for me. Now let's get back to the suit. When he caught the moon, moon rains, I guess you could call them, <laughs> that was a nice practical shot, you know, but the suit, every time he's in that suit and he moves, it's CGI and it's becoming more and more apparent that the CGI was rushed and it just looks sloppy and everything. It looks like a cheap video game from back in the early 2000s or mid 2000s. And it's just not nice looking. Like the suit is supposed to be the coolest aspect of this show. And yet it just looks like CGI goopity goop. And not only does it look like CGI goopity goop, but so does the jackal. There is a reason why the jackal is always at night. There's a reason why the jackal is always shown from a far away distance. When you actually take like a screen grab of it, it looks terrible. Now the actual design is kind of horrifying and it would be scary. It's just the CGI is lame. The CGI is cheap. The CGI is rushed. And I'm just stopping. I think to myself, if you don't have the proper money to do this, you need to go a different route. You need to just go a practical route or something. I get you want to make them all bony skinny looking, but that's not working. It's just not working. And this looks terrible. And people working on this should be embarrassed. Kevin Feige should be embarrassed. Disney should be embarrassed. Marvel should be embarrassed. And it's just kind of like, because they don't care. They just wanted to make this like new superhero because a lot of people have been asking for him ever since the MCU got started and stuff and they know how popular he is amongst the fans and but fans always assume he would never show up and now he's here and it's just kind of like you're not even giving us moon knight moon knight has barely shown up in the first two episodes like it's probably the the the, the longest he's been on there is probably 30 seconds if not a minute and it's kind of embarrassing and so like they should just call the show <laughs> Stephen Grant, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And, but in a ways, he defeats the thing and the bad guy gets his hands on the scarab cage just so happily to conveniently fall down where like, you know, he could find, or somebody else could find it, he could find that person. Now, Layla, when she saw that What's-His-Face had it, why didn't she just run over him with the motor scooter? Boom. Take him out, <laughs> you know, but then we have Conchu constantly teasing and goating like Steven and stuff talking about, oh, you know, oh no, he's goating Mark this time talking about like, oh, do as I say, or I'll find like another candidate in the form of your wife and everything and blah, 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 blah. And so anyways, Steve wakes up, oh, not Steve, but Mark, not many people can feel, not Mark wakes up in Egypt and everything and uh so anyways we see steven in like the mirror realm type of thing and he's being a whiny little baby and it's okay let me get in some things in here i don't like <laughs> which is basically i just got to talk about everything i don't like okay so here's the thing 
get back to the suit. I'm not for this CGI suit. Even Mr. Knight was a bit CGI at times. I don't know why they keep going that CGI route. Is the suit not completely finished or something like that? Or is it just to the point where parts of it are like not finished and they have to like CGI it in? I don't understand that. Now let's look at Moon uh, Mr. Knight's face. There's two pictures here. The one with the glowing eyes is the one we saw on the show. The one where you can see his eyes are the one from like a promotional picture. Which one looks more intimidating to you? The one on the right with the ones you can see the eyes. And that looks so much better than the glowing eyes. The whole glowing eye technique is not working for Moon Knight or Mr. Knight. It makes them look silly, goofy and everything. And it also makes them look friendly. And Moon Knight's not supposed to be friendly. And so I would appreciate it more if they would have went the actual eye route and stuff instead of the whole lens and the whole lighting effect. Or at least just put lenses there. They can make it look gruesome with lenses, but they don't have to have um, the glowing eye effect. And I really wish they would stop with the CGI suit because like the whole chase scene was CGI basically. And the whole suit scene was basically just from the trailer. Now, before this show even started, I kind of had an inkling of what it was going to be about because I saw other reviewers because they got the first four episodes. And right then and there, just like with them, I was just like, why are you sending four episodes out and there's only six total? And I'm starting to see why. Like these other reviewers are saying, the first and fourth episode are really the most interesting ones and the second and the third are just whatever you know what i'm saying they're, they're like a snores fest and everything a snooze fest and so um i will say this show is interesting but the intrigue is starting to wear off now i do think it is interesting that this is the first superhero we've seen with a mental illness and everything and that could be honestly the real reason why they brought moon knight into the mcu think about it When they first started the MCU, they had nothing but white male heroes. Then people's all like, well, where are the people of color and where are the women? Then all of a sudden, the Black Panther showed up. And so then, Black Widow started showing up more and more and more. And if you notice that Black Panther started showing up around the time there was more violence towards black people from the white community. And Black Widow started showing up once this whole female empowerment thing really kicked off. And so Marvel's going to play to what's ever in the headlines and we can make them money. And what's the big craze right now? Mental illness. That's all you hear about now. Every time somebody's upset on like a movie or TV show, the first thing is that, oh, I'm mentally ill and everything. And it's kind of like, okay, some of these people are, I believe, and other people, I just think they're just saying it because it's a new catchphrase for them. Because it's kind of like, oh, they changed uh, my schedule for this show. I'm mentally ill and stuff like that. Or I suffer from mental illness and everything. I need to, you know, protect my health. So this is like a big topic right now. And some people are genuine and have mental illness and are using it to show wellness and other people are just using it as an excuse because they're crybabies and you know they need somebody to feel sorry for them and stuff like that and so moon knight is the ultimate person who deals with mental illness so then it's kind of ironic he shows up when this starts to be a big hot topic and i truly believe this is what they wanted and it's kind of like okay well they're playing around mental illness are they going to do this properly and everything? So far, I just don't know. Well, I'm not a psychiatrist and, and I, I honestly don't know because so far everything's played for like laughs and giggles and everything. Now let's get into um, the intrigue wearing off. The big question is why? Why all this happened? Why is it happening to Steven? And so it makes you intrigued and makes you want to know, hey, what's going on? And you kind of want to stay tuned in because you want to know 
where all this is gonna lead. Now, I think this would have been better if you could binge this show instead of doing a weekly. Now, weekly thing is good for the anticipation, but the anticipation is starting to wear off for a lot of people. Also, these first two episodes, when you start thinking Moon Knight, it doesn't even feel like a TV show. It feels like a movie. Like, I could totally see this being a two hour long movie and stuff with little to no action. Now, the little to no action, I want action, period. That's all I want. But you can get away with not having action. If your story is so compelling and so emotional and dramatizing, then you can get away with having like a minute of action and stuff. This show is not doing that because it's just a goofy show, a goofy, interesting show with generic characters, a generic villain who just wants to take over the world and a generic love interest who just wants to help out. And so my thing with this is like, Steven himself is another problem I'm having. Okay, in the comic books, Moon Knight is a combination of Batman, the Punisher, and the Spectre from DC. He has the look of the Spectre. He has the um, crime fighting and gadget abilities of Batman, and he has the brutality of that of the Punisher. However, for this show, like I told you before, they're writing it for babies. I guess things started getting a little dark and a little too political in like the um, MCU, so they're like, okay, we gotta like water this down you know i guess thanos snapping half of resistance out um half of life out of the resistance was a little too much for the little kids <laughs> you know what i'm saying and then the winter on um, the, the falcon and winter soldier went completely political and stuff and so i guess they wanted to like water it down and we've been seeing that water down effect with every other project that came out Hawkeye was very charming, but Hawkeye should have been a little bit more intense than that. So now we have Moon Knight, and Moon Knight is literally the worst Sailor Moon adaption ever. Now I know what you're saying. Man, you're drunk. Well, I assure you, I've never drank the day in my life. But let me just explain something right here, right now. I see Stephen Grant as Usagi, as Sailor Moon, as Serena, as Princess Serenity, Queen Serenity, whatever you want to call her. He's her, in a nutshell, period. Why? Well, okay, Steven was the, okay, Moon Knight never got a proper origin story so far in this show. We are introduced to Steven, a very likable, man he's the everyday average man who has this weird feeling that he's doing things at night when he's sleeping so he ties himself to a bed he thinks he has a sleeping disorder but then when he starts talking to people it seems that wait is he sleepwalking and interacting with people or does he have multiple personality syndrome and so they're taking a very realistic person and put him in a comic book setting. And so far, when everything starts to like happen in his life, he is a nervous wreck. So much that he is a silly, goofy, nervous wreck. And that's where all the comedy and comedic stuff comes in. And lately, it's starting to go a little bit over the top now. He's too expressionate. Like, he's too jumpy he's too skittish and everything and not only that but he whines and complains a lot natural but he's doing it too much now to where it's getting annoying because he's made to look like a sympathetic character we supposed to feel sorry for him because he didn't ask for all this he thinks he's real and everything and the question is is he real did marvel pull a switcheroo did they make Mark the um personality, the multiple personality, and is Steven the main host? But when we finally get a backstory from Mark, it's only told to us, never shown. And now it's starting to see maybe Mark is the primary and maybe Steven is the um, multiple personality and stuff. But we truly really don't know because the show is kind of rushing and glossing over that. 
And so we know Mark has been married. We know Mark has lived this other life. So in our minds, truly, Mark is the primary. But the show is trying to make us pretend that is actually Stephen. We know little to nothing about Mark. From what the other reviewers have said, say so long to Stephen. Because by the third and fourth episode, you're really not going to see much of him no more. Um, he'll probably show up towards the last two episodes, probably. And so they literally put us in two episodes getting to know Steven, making us feel sorry for Steven, making us like Steven, and making us very annoyed by Steven. And the thing is, Steven ain't going to stay around for much longer because if Mark is truly the primary, Mark is going to take over. And what do we know about Mark? Little to nothing. We know also we know little or nothing about Steve. We don't know what his favorite this is and that's are. You know what I'm saying? We just know that he's a man who works at a job and his boss is mean to him and he he thought he had sleep in this order, this and that. And we just know he's a cowardly giddish, like, you know, um like scary, like he's scared of everything type thing. And so when it comes to Mark, all we know is that when he is Moon Knight, he beats the snot out of people. Or so we thought until we saw this episode. And he's very tame. And we know he's married. So, are they now going to let us get to know Mark and like him? Well, so far, I could care less about Mark. And that's the problem. I was supposed to care about Mark. And, but then in this episode, when Steven was Mr. Knight... He went the whole silly factor. Hey, man, look at me. I got a nice suit on and everything. But there's danger in the air, and he doesn't care about that no more. And then all of a sudden, when he sees how strong he is, he's all like, well, maybe I could, like, beat this thing up and be a hero, stuff like that. Only for Mark to take back over. And this is where the whole Sailor Moon thing comes in. Now, Usagi, she's just a little girl, a teenage girl. She oversleeps. She makes bad grades. She wants nothing but to fall in love, and she wants everybody else to fall in love. She's a super sweet, nice, kind girl. Until a talking cat, who's also magical, gives her the ability to turn into a superhero. She doesn't want to fight crime. She still wants to be that lobo, nice little girl that she is. And when she does see these monsters of the week, they scare the bejesus out of her. And so, but when push comes to shove and she sees there's no other choice, she puts on her um, big girl dress and she takes it to the villains and stuff. And throughout the entire, and even when she does, throughout the entire series of Sailor Moon, She's still, no matter what, that scared, frightened little girl who screams and cries all the time and, and wants to like be a normal little girl. Even when she knows the world is about to be destroyed, she wants to give up sometimes. But then, like I said before, when it gets like to finale time and push comes to shove, she's like, okay, like, whatever. I gotta like, you know, I gotta do this. I gotta save people. If I want people to be happy and fall in love and everything, I gotta like do whatever it takes, even if it means killing myself and sacrificing myself, which eventually she does sometimes. And so like the big payoff with that is that she's a normal little girl who did not ask to be a superhero. And as she is a superhero, she is still frightened and scared and everything. But she knows she has to do the right thing and she defeats whatever bad person that is that, that season. That is the big payoff right there. Is that we're, 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 we're forced to like her because she's so sweet and innocent and then we feel sorry for her because we want her just to be a normal girl. We don't want her to be a superhero because she don't want to be a superhero. And then we feel bad when she has to lose the love of her life, um, when her friends are in danger, and when she, her daughter is in danger from the future, and like when the world is like an apocalyptic type thing in the future, and her sacrificing herself. It's like this teeny tiny little girl who has no business being a superhero is one of the best superheroes of all time even though she's a scared wreck and that is the huge payoff right there we're forced to now like her even more you know what i'm saying 
Also, another similarity that these two have is that, okay, when Usagi starts off in the Sailor Moon, like, comic, manga, whatever you want to call it, in the TV series, she is that of just Usagi, a regular girl, knows nothing about her past life. It is through the reveal, through the first season, through, like, Luna the Cat, and through, like, flashbacks, memories, resurfacing, all this and that, that she had a life way before that. In fact, she had a life about, oh, a thousand years ago, or a hundred. I can't remember which one. Is that a hundred or a thousand? Probably a thousand. And so, like, she lived on the moon. She was a princess. She fell in love with Tuxedo Mask, also known as uh, Mamaru. And, you know, then this evil woman came in and then she pretty much tried to destroy everything where her mom sacrificed herself. And she had this entire life that she knew, never knew about. And then her mom sent her and the rest of the people on the Moon Kingdom to Earth where they're reincarnated and stuff. This is kind of similar to the whole Stephen Grant, Mark Spector thing. Mark Spector, Stephen doesn't know nothing about Mark Spector. Mark Spector has this entire life um, before Stephen Grant took over in the whole Moon Knight thing. So it's like a weird adaption. Plus they got the whole moon thing thing. Sailor Moon lived on the moon. She has moon powers. Stephen, oh, Mark Spector, the Moon Knight, he takes his powers from that of the Egyptian moon god. It's just a weird similarity in everything. If Steven isn't going to prevail and be the big hero people now want to see, then it's all for nothing. This whole uh, flip-flop thing of flipping the script on Mark and Steven isn't going to um, pay off the way they want it to if they don't make it pay off. Another problem I'm having so far is the whole threesome aspect of Mark, Layla, and Steven. Like, you know... The interaction between Steven and Layla is expected, you know what I'm saying? Um, but I wish I could have gotten like a little bit more emotion throughout this whole thing. Uh, it would have been nice to see Layla be a little bit more frantic, like, yo, why don't you remember me? Stuff like that. And Steven would be all like, cuz, I don't know who this Mark person is. Like, I wish I could have been given more. It wasn't enough. And then, you know, the people from that organization came in and kind of ruined that dialogue. But then afterwards, you know, just give us more. So maybe we'll see more in episode three, but I doubt it if Mark is gonna remain in episode three. So it's kind of like the writers are just like rushing through this. This should have been like, a, I would have been fine with the lack of action if they would have gave us more Layla and Steven um, trying to figure out what's going on between like the two and why isn't Mark there, you know? But the writers didn't do that. They just glossed over that to give us some more humorous stuff and then to get more into our generic villain who's just generic, you know what I'm saying? Also, this would have been nice to have a little bit more Kanchu and everything. It would have been nice to know what he is really about other than us like being told stuff. Is he really mocked by the other Egyptian gods? Does he really manipulate people? We see that he is starting to manipulate Steve a little bit by, you know, talking about, oh, I'll just pick Layla to be my new avatar and everything. Like, let's see what this dude is about. Don't give us little bits and pieces. Try to give us a little bit more as to like who this dude is. I don't want to find out probably like in the sixth episode or so, you know, or the fifth and stuff like let us know now. Like what is this dude's deal and why does he pick the people that he picked and everything. We know Mark was basically dying. That's from the comic. If you read the comic or read on Wikipedia, you know that's what that's about. Mark died. Kanshu uh, resurrected him into that of like Moon Knight. It's very much like the Spectre and everything, you know? Spectre, um, whatever that dude's name is, died, and he became the Spectre, and now he does the whole vengeance thing. That is who Moon Knight is. You wouldn't know that unless you read up on it, and the show doesn't give us enough to know about that. One throwaway line is, it would be nice to see like a flashback or something, you know? Another problem I'm having is I want to see what both Steven and Mark's life is about. Who is the true primary? 
I'm pretty sure it is Mark, but by the way they're making it seem on the show, it could very well just be Steven. Steven, when he was arguing with Mark, he's all like, oh, maybe I'll get myself arrested, get locked in the mental institute, that way you'll never have to come out and be Moon Knight again. He even says that, you know, he has a life and memories. What life and memories is that? Let's see what that's about when it comes to that of Steven. Does he remember what he was like growing up? Does he remember who his parents are? In the comments, the reason why Steven was created, something has to do with Mark when he was a child and something, something about bullies or something like that. I can't really remember. And that's how the whole Steven persona came about. So well, let's see what the deal is with like this Steven. Let's have some flashbacks. Um, let's, and if Mark is the primary, let's see what his life was like back in the day, uh, especially with him and his wife. Like, I hope that gets explored in the third episode. It would have been nice to explore that in the second episode, you know? Because, I mean, if they wasn't going to give us a real action sequence in the second to keep us, like, um, gripped in, then they could at least explain with that or something. So since the intrigue is weighing off for me, I could honestly care less about what happens to Steven. I could care less about what happened to Mark because Mark is not an interesting person. And I could care less about Layla because she just now got introduced in the second episode and she's just generic. I could care less about the villain. I could care less about any of these people. I could care less about how they're introduced into the MCU. And this is quite a shame because out of all the MCU Disney Plus stuff, Falcon and the Winter Soldier, Hawkeye, and now Moon Knight was the, the biggest ones I was looking forward to. And they're kind of falling flat and just being a dud. Like, Falcon Winter Soldier started off strong, but then it went a completely different route in like the other episodes, starting with the second episode. And it's all like, what was the point in setting all that stuff up in the first episode if you're just gonna go in a completely left field and everything? And then there's Hawkeye. I thought that was gonna be like a cool action packed show, and it was just like an like a charming holiday special type thing, you know? And you know, I liked WandaVision, but because you know the whole references to like the older shows but then after a while it just kind of like well where is this going man but then like oh wow that's a huge twist I didn't see that coming and you know now there's moon night and it's just kind of like i don't care <laughs> <laughs> and I liked Moon Knight because of all the pictures in the comics and stuff because he looks awesome and stuff. And he seemed really intriguing with the whole multiple personality things. And because see, he uses his multiple personalities to help him operate in the field. It's not just this whole mental illness thing of him thinking, you know, he doesn't even know about the other personalities and stuff. Like he does actually know about them. And it, the, 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 they trying to make this into some big movie, cinematic, like mentally awareness, like type thing. And I don't know. I think they're just falling flat. And I'm very bored. I need action in this show because the drama in it isn't enough, you know. And now he's going to Egypt and everything. And it's kind of like, uh, I don't know, man. This show is just kind of boring and everything. I could honestly care less about it. And so I just don't feel like waking up until probably like the sixth episode, because we know in the sixth episode something's good probably gonna happen. <laughs> I mean, why would they drop four episodes to reviewers to review early? And there's only six in the entire run of the show. That made absolutely no sense unless they knew they was in trouble and they are in trouble. The CGI does not look that great. The story is rushed. Uh, people are confused, you know, and people are disappointed. Alrighty, well, I'll talk to y'all later. Bye.